So you cool with talking about, so when you went to prison. So, yeah. yeah. So talk to us that. And I wanted to ask a bit to lead on to that question anyway, in a sense where, what was the moment that you was like, so of course your influences growing up was the man them on the roads, you know, big cars, big dad, chains. Yeah, you know. What my, I'm my, my dad, my dad was a, was a, was a somebody as well. Was your pops so, as well? Yeah, big. So, yeah. W- so of course your product and your environment. When did you? When was the click? When you? When was you like? Now nah, you know what, but I was destined to do something different. When was that click? And- honestly, honestly, about twenty five, twenty six, because people will always look at, you know, jail being the the motive, and that was the reason that. Uh, I changed, but it weren't really. It was it was an eye opener. I was embarrassed, obviously, because I embarrassed my mom. My mom used to work at a train station, in it in Birmingham, and we have a local paper called the Birmingham Mail. So if you can imagine, it's a free paper, similar to the Metro now. Yeah, and you yeah. guys down here would have the Metro. That on the front of that paper was me and my brother saying footballers gone to jail. Well, thug, thug football has gone to jail, something like that. So every every person that came into the station that knew my mum, because obviously as a parent, she was like, my son plays for Watford, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. That day crushed her more than it, it crushed me. Do you get what I mean? Like, mm. For me, it was something that happened, whatever. But knowing my mum left work that day in tears because she was ashamed of what me and my brother got up to, that crushed me. As a human being, that crushed me. So I went, all right, I need to sort myself out a bit here. Um... And then, you know, I get visits from my nan when I'm in jail. Like, no one wants your nan to visit her in jail. Yeah, yeah. My nan, you know what I mean? It's, it's embarrassing. But I, I did all of that. And I say all of that because I had my son as well at the time. So my oldest son, I just had him. So I'd left very early. I think he was about, I want to say it was two, maybe. Very early, two, maybe three. But I left again a long time of that without seeing him. But it really clicked when I came back and I focused and I realised I had nothing when I came back. I had 10 grand when I came back, bro. 10 grand. And that's what Maps gave me. Troy, like, how long How long yeah. were you actually in prison for? And you know how people talk about, like, reform stories and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Did, did you, genuinely, did you learn anything in prison? Did it teach you anything? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Sorry to put you low. Sorry. No, no, um, right. it was. It was... I did three months inside and three months on tag. And I was playing games on tag, so... I had to drive to like Blackburn, Cardiff, Middlesbrough on the day and get back in time for tags, obviously. That's mad. Um, That's mad. I don't think you clock that. That is mad. That is mad, T. Driving. And then also, whenever he got kicked, I was getting like letters saying he's trying to hack it. He's trying to do this. He's trying to leave it. Oh, you mean getting kicked in training? It was always. And John, you can remember this, right? Just say yes or no. So kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, see, see, he was here then as well. So I even had to then write letters the following day, but like to explain why it got went off six times at two till four. Wow! Jeez. And then because they were, they were trying to send me back to jail, and that you know that that's not an excuse. That's that's my own fault for putting myself in that situation. But there was some real testing times from that, um, and then obviously through there, I also had to go and because I got arrested um, while drunk, so I had to do uh, alcohol awareness, drug. Um, drug awareness and something. I'd, I'd see a psychologist for a few minutes. So um, that kind of set me on the, the whole psychology thing. And that's where I'm sorting myself out. Ultimately, like, I have to put it into perspective. So when, when we used to go out, me and my friends, there was 20, 30, sometimes 40 of us. Mm. And it was a whole mob mentality. Like, no bouncers could stop us. We'd go in, do what we did, kind of come out, have a good time, go out. And, and it was all... And bear in mind, at this point, I'm earning five, six, seven grand a week. I think I'm the man. Mm. So I was walking around with a, an alter ego that, that, that basically gave me a, a level of stature with who I was with already that we couldn't be touched. So what jail did more than ever was made me sit down and go, you're just a normal person. Yeah. That it re- reinforced that. And then at that moment, when everything went, literally by a judge going, bang, your sentence all right, I've got to fix up here because look how quick all of that went. And when you look back at time, it was only two years of my life that I was actually living this so-called high life. Mm. So I had to figure it out. Did you ever think, you know, when you say like the judge said, right, guilty, this is what's going to happen. Did did it only really sort of sink in then that you would actually and that you were going down? Did you before that kind of think, I'll get off this? No, I knew I, knew I was going to jail. 
Did you? And that's that's why I pled guilty straight away. We knew I was going. My solicitor said from the second he saw the video that you're going to jail. It's just how long we can get you off. Uh, so I ain't gonna lie, hey, big man. What did you go to jail for? It ended up being a fray in the end. But okay. um, I basically I basically got into an, an altercation that I shouldn't have got into. Yeah. Um, and the biggest decided factor was when when the person was on the ground, I kicked that person in the face. Okay. So I don't, I don't. Again, I'm not saying any of that to to glamorise it. I'm just giving context. Like yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I said yeah. sorry a million times. So, and I appreciate that that's somebody else's child. So I don't want to ever yeah. glamorise it. Of course. Do you get what I mean for that? Yeah, yeah. For no that doubt, no doubt. It. But that was obviously with the power that I have and the legs I have. It was always going to be a, a key deciding factor in how long I actually got. So, um, yeah, it, it was that really. It was, but I do believe it was a, again, it was a moment in life that I needed it because, I, again, some people know, some people won't. I, I buried my dad on the Friday and went to jail on the Monday. I oh, did. Wow. 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 So you had a lot of time then. You had a lot of time when mm. you were in prison for those three months to think about everything that had happened to, to, to grieve for your dad as well. Mm, yeah, I don't, I don't think I did that properly if I'm being honest, because I still struggle. Mm. Like, even today, like, today's my granddad's anniversary. So I woke up today with the whole, like, I don't, don't want to do this no more. Mm. That was my feeling at half five this morning when I woke up. I'm like, I don't want to do this no more. I just want to go home. But get up, dig in, crack on, spoke to my nan, spoke to my mum. And, we, and we're here, we're, do, we're back to business. So I don't really process grief well because... Mm. I'm a church going similar to the big man. So I like to think this is just a stage and afterwards I'll meet them again. We'll have a beer, yeah, yeah. we'll have a chat and we'll figure everything out. But if I stop and think, I'll drive myself crazy. Does that make sense? hundred percent. I want to ask you something. So, you know, I've already touched on about being a product of your environment. You know, when you got mm -hmm. sentenced, did mm -hmm. you think at that time or did you doubt yourself and just think, you know what? I am my son. I am my father's son and I'm going to go down the same path of him as him? Or at that time, did you be like, nah, you know what? Nah, I am going to change this story. Um, you understand what I'm saying? You know what? It's I understand exactly what you say, but it's really complex to, 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 to explain, so I'll try my best. But if you, if you could imagine, everyone around me has been to jail. No one, it's not unusual. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, it's not unusual for to see someone today and not see them for a year. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. To, who, who saw such and such? Oh, he's got locked up again, you know. Wow. He'll be back sooner. Yeah, yeah. It's, that, that, it's that, just that, like a... I actually, the thing is, I know, I, the worst thing is, and because Laura said, wow, and for me, I, I totally got what you said. I, I totally yeah. understood that. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I might see so, so-and-so. Yeah, yeah, boom. I, I, I totally yeah, got and that. and then you keep it moving yeah. and, and, and everyone carries on. But within that, like I said, like my childhood with my dad being gone six months, a year, two years, three years, depending on whatever situation, he was gone for, for that amount of time. So my mum did a very good job of shielding us from that by saying like, oh, dad's gone on a business trip or dad's gone here. And then even he was sneaky, like he'd send us letters from jail, but would put like a, a stamp on it from Singapore. It's oh, only when I, like as a, as a, like a 11 year old, 12 year old, I, did, I didn't know any different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, when I've when I've then buried him and doing his eulogy, I didn't even know he didn't have a passport. He'd never been on a holiday before. Wow. Wow. So it's only stuff like that when you get older, you're like, right, sure, you was naive, you know. Yeah. But yeah. sorry to, to to answer your question, it's like I got I got locked up in Winston Green Jail, which anyone knows, thank you, is a proper proper jail. It's not no mess about jail. But I went in there, I got two of my friends from home on the same wing. <laughs> I got I go to the gym, the guy goes Dini, and you, Berkey's son. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I get, and that, my dad, that was my dad's name. And then I got eight big muscle juice heads looking at me like, I thought, oh, I'm going to get filled in here. And they've all gone like, now nah, you're Berkey's son. We're going to tell you about yourself. But if you wasn't, we'd fill you in. Oh, my God. But like wow. all these people knew my dad. So they give me a, they give me a pass in the sense of he can move around freely, but also they're going to check me. And that's what, that's why I helped it because they told me about myself, told me, do you not understand how many kids want to be you and you're messing it up trying to do this life that we don't want to do anyway? Mm. Like, what, what are you doing? And it was only then when you go, oh, all right then. Because I've never been afraid to fight anybody. That's not a problem. Mm. But when somebody that I, like, 
someone in there I used to call Uncle Jimmy. That's how close he was. He was he was one of my dad's Irish friends. So he was always around and he was like, your dad would be turning his grave now if he knew you was here. Like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, at them points, when them conversations hit, you go, oh, okay, I need to, I need to keep. <laughs>